Max, thank you for your time today on afl.com.au. You've obviously still got the, the big game to play, but as it gets closer and as you reflect on where you've come from as a person and where the Demons have come from as a club, can you believe it? I, it's, I mean, it's a tough question at this time of the year because there's still obviously one game to go. Um, the bit that is hard to believe, even for someone who had, um, I was purely thinking 2019, we were a chance to win it, but in 2019, we come 17th. And then 2020, we come ninth. We missed out on percentage. Funny enough, to Western Bulldogs, we missed out on percentage to them. They finished eighth, I'm pretty sure. Um, and then to go from 17th to ninth and now to first and playing off the grand final, um, that's happened quicker than I thought it would. Um, you know, I've, I've had a feeling that this group and this team and the club that we've built um, could do it, but it has happened quicker than I thought it would. And um, we were able to jump on the momentum that we did earlier in the year. We got to, I think it was 11 and zero. Um, and that, like no one knows what comes first. Is it the changing of the culture, the sessions that we did for about 2020 and then at the start of this year as well? Or is it the fact that we started winning and we're changing the culture at the same time that it sort of merged together and we were able to really become um, strong and united and play some really good football. But um, we are one game away still. Um, against a quality opposition, which I'm presuming we're going to have a lot of games with over the next sort of three or four years because their profile sort of seems to suit our profile. Um, Bonson and Track seem like they're going to be going head-to-head -head for a while yet and Clayton and McRae are similar, so um, it's an exciting little battle. And when you say that you felt this group was going to get there, do you recall that exact moment? I think I, I definitely think when Ruzi first sort of came into the, that, yeah. came into the group in like 15, 16, that sort of era, um, you felt like you were, you were away from the 2012-13 Demons. You felt like you were away from that and you were a different club and you were starting to do things and you were becoming relevant. People were talking about you and um, there was uh, definitely 2015, we were almost in finals. 16, we just missed out. 17, we missed out on percentage ridiculously by 0.02%. So we were starting to become relevant. Um, and then 18, I certainly saw the talent that we had. And then obviously 19 and 20 speaks for itself and how disappointing that was. But um, I saw it coming. It's been a linear sort of growth, but I didn't think we'd jump straight to where we are this year. Sure. I totally get that it is difficult for you to talk about some of this, given that the, the grand final is still to be played. But can you allow yourself a, a sense of pride just sitting where you are right now going into that grand final? Uh, oh, 100%. Um, I think a grand final is Sunak in itself. Like I look at 2018 and I ticked off Sunak in my bucket list. I played in an away prelim in a town that was crazy, one eye for West Coast. And um, I was able to tick off an amazing bucket list op op opportunity. Obviously we didn't play that well that day. Now I've got a chance to tick off a grand final. Um, obviously I want to win that, but to be involved in something like that and not thinking that I was really a chance to be involved for numerous amounts of my career from both if our team made it, if I was individually going to be in the team and also if our team was going to make it. So um, it, is, it, is, it is a great feeling. And, 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 it's, and it's sad that some of the past players that have now gone won't be able to be involved. And um, you'd love to have Brad Green here and, and Cam Bruce and James McDonald and David Neitz to, to really soak it up because these guys did go through the hard years for us and did like Nathan Jones, for example, has, has, has changed Melbourne and they've started to get us pointy and now we're the lucky ones, myself, Christian Clayton, where um, we get to play at the finals. But you really do wish that, that all those guys were able to be here with it. And you've always made sure you, you reference those who've come before you and others at the Demons when you talk about the Melbourne journey. When you reference there the, the bucket list moment that the 2018 prelim final was, and then you go to 2021 and you're playing another prelim final and come out of it with five goals to your name and arguably, probably, the best game of your life. How did that make you feel? There's definitely a different feeling from 18 to now. So 18, we were, we were living a high. We came fifth and we had to win our way all the way to a prelim. And we just played off the back of two massive Melbourne uh, uh, crowds, 95,000 against Geelong and Hawthorne, who were stalwarts of the finals. So we were on a high, we were on a massive high. We were happy to be there. I, I, I'm not ashamed of saying that. In 2018, we were happy to be in the prelim. Um, this year was just a completely different feel about it. The Brisbane game, it was, we had work to do. And then coming into the prelim, it's we had work to do. Um, we're here for work, we're here for a job, we're here to get to the big dance, we're here to win it. Um, that's a completely different feel to what we had in, eight, in, eight, in 18. So as much as I say it's a bucket list, 
it's still, that's one side of my mind thinking. The other side of my mind thinking is we've been the best team, if not one of the best two teams of the comp throughout the year. We've got an almighty opportunity because there's a good chance that it doesn't happen again next, next year. We want it to be a club that builds for the next five or 10 years and be able to be a Geelong or a Hawthorne, but um, there's a good chance that it doesn't and uh, a lot of past players will say that it won't. So um, we've got an opportunity to do it now and um, yeah, you'd be stupid if you're thinking otherwise that um, you want to win this grading. I know you want to talk team and you always do and, and fair enough about that too, but just allow me, go back to that game for one moment, please. Was it your best game? How big was it? It's funny, I've always, I've always valued my game on contested marking um, and none of those goals came from contested marks. I think maybe the last one. Um, so it's an interesting way of valuing my game. I'm doing stuff that I don't normally um, play like. And um, yeah, I mean, the team did all the work to, to, to be fair to start. Well, 40 points up before I kicked my first goal. So um, I got on the back of a pretty good team performance early on. But um, yeah, I'd, 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 I'd say in terms of impact in the game, it probably was one of my best games. And um, I don't think I'd had a standout performance in the final yet. So to be able to play a really good final and in a position against a side that we've had a lot of rivalry with, um, Geelong, and I've also had a lot of rivalry with, with missing a goal and kicking a goal after a siren in that exact rivalry. To do that in a prelim was pretty special, but um, I've got to back it up now, don't I? <laughs> the selflessness that has been such a, a strong part of what you've been about in 2021, do you know when that kicked in? Can you recall the exact moment? And, and as you do answer that part of it, can you also elaborate, please, on, on who drove it the hardest? Um, I, I, there's still that little bit that I said at the start that winning helps a yeah. new culture change. So as much as we push this selfless culture from the end of 2020 um, and then a little bit of the start of this preseason, if we had lost the first four games, five games, there might have been a different story. So... Um, we felt like we made a lot of inroads, though, to be fair, in the preseason. Um, it was pushed by multiple people. And it was pushed by some of our best players. Um, it was pushed by Track. It was pushed by Clayton. Um, Clayton's whole motto throughout his whole season this year is, I want to be the best teammate I can be. And he came up with that by himself. He didn't get pressured by Goody to write that or pressured by me to write that. He came up with that by himself. And if you ask the defenders, and our defenders are normally the guys that you go ask for stuff because they tend to be the most selfless players. And they say Clayton is 100% the best player to play with. So he's been able to tick that off. Stephen May and Jake Lever saying, you're the most selfless teammate. Is it fair to say that Clayton wasn't always that way? Or am I being too harsh in saying that? I think we all had selfish tendencies throughout um, our careers and, and different times. And um, when, you are, when you win the best in Ferris in your second year, like Clayton did, um, it's, you are the best player. You are the best player straight away at the age of, nine, uh, age of 19. You play juniors as the best player. You've never, you've never had to sit in different seats, and um, it's all part of Clayton's learning curve. I would never say he's been a selfish player. Um, same with Christian, same with Jack, same with myself, same with Harmsy in the mid, 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 midfield. But we've never really gelled as a group. Um, so, like, we still do stuff. Like uh, Christian would still have shots when he'd say he'd pass. But the, the the general feel of things is we we're there to help our teammate and our friend get better and. Um, I, I think the Clayton example is a perfect example, but they, it goes all the way through. Steve and Jake Lever, um, they've created Harry Petty. Um, Steve could just quite handily just say, I want to take every mark that comes inside and I want to take every kick, but they've created a young Harry Petty who's, if not as good as those guys in some certain games. So um, it, 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 it's not driven from one is the, is the answer. It's definitely um, Goody. Uh, we've got Jane, Jimmy Plunkett who, who, who works in our culture space. Um, Adam Uze, Choco Williams coming in and sharing stuff from different clubs. Um, Ed Langdon, Adam Tomlinson sharing stuff from different clubs. And you sort of get to somewhere where you think this is Melbourne, like this is us. This will, this will drive us forward. So 2016 and 18, 19, 20, 21, there you obviously your all Australian years, this year being the, the captaincy attached to the, the fifth all Australian jacket. It's a, it's an extraordinary journey, Max, and I know you know that, but 2009 drafted with an ACL behind you already. Three years later, another ACL. There's other injury issues. You're struggling in the VFL. You're being played as a forward. You get to 2021 and, and here you are. It is an incredible journey, isn't it? Yeah, I look back, I would not change a thing. My, my early six years, my first six years, um, I learned so much, not only to be a footballer, but to be a person, be an adult. Um, to, to now be a husband and hopefully be a father in a couple of weeks. 
I learned a lot of those traits in my first few years, rucking with Mark Jamer. Um, he, he did not want me to be the first rucker training, let alone in the game. So he made me work for every hit out. Um, and, I, and I obviously had my injuries and I was frustrated with what position I wanted to play in. And if they wanted to be a forward with Russia, and, or if I think I could have taken the ruck off Russia, which I did. Um, but I got my chance at the end of 15, uh, played a really good year in 16. Like you said, I got, I got injured in 17. And I felt like I got injured in 17 because I, was, I wasn't as fit as I could be. Um, I played at a heavy weight in 16 and played quite well. And I kept that weight. Um, and 17, I tore my hammy and I came back around 16. I just didn't think I was anywhere near the form I wanted to be. And we missed finals by percentage. Um, and that really hit me. So that's the, the famous, I lost 10 kilos over, over a summer break. And since then, I haven't missed a training session, let alone a game, apart from uh, last year, I had a little PCL for two weeks. Um, I love every pre-season session. I make sure that I tick off every pre-session. I think that's the way I like to lead. I like to show that the hard work needs to be done before any sort of success. And um, yeah, I've got a couple of um, individual awards, especially in recent years, but like you said, they all sort of point towards one thing and it's, it's what I want in this next week. Like I, I, I'm so driven to be a premiership player that I'd swap all five jackets right back now for, um, for, for, for one of those medals. You've obviously changed as a, as a person, as people do, and, and as players do, you've also changed. But those who've known you throughout the entire time say you've always stayed true to yourself. <laughs> I probably don't notice it, um, to be fair. I don't, I, I'm just being the person I am at face value and um, I wouldn't know if I've changed or not or if I am this person that everyone seems to find approachable. Um, but all I can put it down to is my family values. Um, the way my mum and dad have brought me up, um, they're loyal, they're hardworking, um, they're fun and they're fun people. And I've taken all three of those values um, to heart and I feel like that's the way I like to be. And um, I always go back to what Jim Stein said to me in my first year. Um, you got Tom Scully, Jack Trangrove, all this talent around and Jim Steins literally stood me up in front of a hundred people, footy department and goes, this kid's going to do things differently. And I'm like, well, is he pointing at me or is he pointing at Scowls? I don't know what he's doing. He, he made me stand up and said, this kid will do things differently. Watch out. And it just, it struck me. And then we caught up afterwards and he said, I don't want you to ever change. He, he, it, it's amazing words that he said to me. And um, he said he, thinks that he did things differently and it worked for him. And, I, and he thought I could do things differently and it'll work, will work for me. And, it's certainly from a footy sense, it seems to have worked from an individual, individual point of view, hopefully from a team point of view in the next few weeks, but it's worked for me as a person. Um, I've, I've, I've become a really good husband, I think. You probably have to ask Jess, but um, hopefully be a good dad. I'm becoming a better brother, um, a better son, and that's all I want to be, and a better teammate, a better captain. Um, and it comes from words. And now I feel a responsibility to share that on 18, 19 year olds coming in We've got some different cats this year. Like Jake, Jake Bow is a different cat, and so is Trent Rivers and Luke Jackson's as different as you'll ever see. But we've got to maintain that. They've got to maintain their differences while ticking off values. We've got values that we want them to live by as become a Melbourne player. If they tick them off, they can, do, they can be the person they want to be. Now, you've mentioned Jim Steins there. I was going to get there. You beat me to it. Um, the two numbers you've worn in footy were, were his numbers, the bond you had from effectively day one of your time as a demon. Um, how hard is it? For you, with that aspect of your relationship with Melbourne people, and, and particularly Jim Steins not being here this week, to see you in this particular period, given what you've been through, what he'd been through, and how proud he would be of you. Yeah, I, I mentioned this sort of at the start. I look at all things that's happened throughout my career, and I feel like everyone who did something has been working to a moment like this. Um, yes, we haven't, we're not there yet, but a moment, the grand final is still a moment like, 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 like this, and. Um, the initial work that I saw from Jim Steins, Don McClarty, um, David Turin, that, that group of board, and then to be able to hand it to the next board with Glenn and David Trotter and David Turin again, and um, Peter Jackson within there and Paul Ruse within there, like all these people, they might not have had straight away success, but that's been leaning towards what this moment is. And, and to answer your Jim question, yeah, I, I mean, I'd love to see him here. It happened 10 years ago, uh, he passed away, but um, likes of Neil Danaher, um, would love to see him here. Um, Colin Sylvia, who's unfortunately passed away. I got a message from his dad during the week saying Colin would be extremely proud. I've never talked to Colin Sylvia's dad, but um, there has been a lot of tragedy that's followed Melbourne and I feel like it would be sentimental to have this at the MCG so everyone could be around and 
Um, but I'm sure they're watching on their TV screens and I'm hoping that we bring a lot of joy to those people. Max, you're always very generous with your, your time and more importantly, your insight into yourself and the game. And for that, again, at afl.com.au, we're thankful. No worries. Thank